again. <laughs> um, welcome to this session about modeling and simulation in industry and logistics. My name is, uh, um, oh sorry, no, um, I think that uh, this, uh, I, um, I looked at the wrong session because I <laughs> will also be the chair in another session, so let me uh, just check, in fact. This is the session about simulation and optimization in warehousing, supplying and distribution, sorry. Uh, we have uh, um, approximately six presentations, I think. Yeah, exactly, six presentations in this uh, session. And uh, um, I also have access to all the videos uh, that the authors have provided um, some days ago. So, um, I, if Katerina is here, um, is it better, Katerina, if we use the, the videos or um, I can also ask authors to, to do the presentation yeah. right now? Yes, the authors will start to, to play her its video. Ah, okay, they, okay yeah. they will play their video. Okay, so yeah. Mattia is the first speaker and uh, his paper is about a hybrid heuristic uh, uh, algorithm for solving the traveling salesman problem with time windows. A3 poll M number five. Mattia, do you have access to your video? Uh, yes, so I have to share my screen and play the video. Possibly. Okay, uh, just a second to yes, share the screen. Let me just check Please if you are tell me able if you, to use. If you okay. see it, yeah. I will um, present you the work uh, I made uh, together with my colleague Letizia Tebaldi uh, and I'm Mattia Neroni from the Department of Engineering at University of Parma. Uh, in occasion of this work, we designed and implemented a hybrid heuristic for the traveling salesman problem with Tom Windows. I will show the contribution of this work, a quick overview of the inspiration algorithms, then the proposed approach in details, the computational experiments and the results, and then we'll get to the conclusions. Uh, so the traveling system problem with time windows is a well-known combinatorial optimization problem. I think you know it. We have to define a Hamiltonian cycle throughout a set of nodes, but it nodes must be visited inside a specific time span. Uh, this finds many applications, of course, in transportation, if you consider the nodes as customers uh, to be visited by truck, uh, but also in manufacturing or flow shops, for example, if we see the nodes like activities to be carried out in a specific time frames. Also in bioinformatics and DNA sequencing, it finds some applications, so it's a very widespread problem. Uh, in particular, in this case, we focus on the big size, the TSPTV, so those instances in which the number of nodes or the width of the time windows makes them very, very complicated, even more than NPR, let's say. And in this case, in real case application, sometimes even the metaristics uh, can be too slow if we need a solution in uh, real time, so in a few seconds or even less. This is particularly true in case of evolutionary algorithms because they need several iterations before converging. So we wanted in this case a very fast algorithm. And we took inspiration from by, we've been inspired by these two procedures, well-known procedures, which are the divide and conquer and the biases randomization. The divide and conquer, I think everybody knows it here. It consists in recursively breaking down the starting problem into sub-problems until they are easily easy enough to be solved directly. Of course, this procedure refuses a priori the global optimum, but it can have very good benefits and it has many applications like binary sort or the quick sort, very uh, famous and well-known algorithms. The other one is the bias randomization, which is inspired by the GRASP and it also introduces a slight modification in the exploration of the solution space so that uh, without losing of course uh, the solid greedy behavior it makes use of theoretical distribution and it founds uh, many application i think the most famous one is the incorporation in the uncolony optimization metaheuristic framework so in the proposed approach, uh, of course, uh, the starting and ending point always match. And every time a customer is visited before or after its uh, time windows, its opening time, a penalty cost is involved. And we consider in particular the costing time for both travels and penalties. 
uh, these assumptions, uh, we made it just because the comparison algorithm we will use, you will see it later, was using these assumptions. So we made it just for a fair comparison, but we don't think it will impact a lot, would impact a lot on the results of the algorithm proposed. Uh, the main procedure basically consists uh, on, in the splitting, so the divide and conquer classic approach. So every time we select a random node and we split the problem into two smaller subproblems. The first one is made by the nodes closing after the randomly selected one and the other one by the nodes closing before. And we repeat this procedure until the subproblems is uh, uh, too big um, once they find a certain threshold, which is basically the number of nodes that constituted it, that made it. The optimization of the subsets is made using an iterated local search that incorporates the Bayes algorithm. So every time we have this uh, solution and we destruct and reconstruct part of it. If uh, the new obtained solution is better than the current best found so far, Yes, then the beta is set low to the starting value. So the, na the size of the destructed and reconstructed part is set uh, to a starting low value. Otherwise it is increased. So in the next iteration, we will destruct and reconstruct more of the current solution. So uh, yeah, the constructed and reconstructed part is bigger. Uh, the construction is made using uh, is made node by node and using the Bayes randomization. So every time we have to include in the new solution the next node, we sort all the remaining nodes from the best to the worst according to the advance or delay generated by their insertion in the specific position, and. Uh, uh, we, we carry out the selection according to a probability uh, uh, modeled by a geometric, quasi-geometric distribution. So we prioritize the best nodes, but we also give the possibility to the worst nodes to be placed in that position. For the validation, we, compare, we implemented the algorithm in both Golang and Python. You find both implementation open source at this link, but we used it for the paper Golang because the comparison algorithm was written in a compiled language, so it was more fair. Um, we did, of course, a parameter tuning using a true level full factorial design for each critical parameter. And uh, we compared it with the Silvio Rutia, which is a very good uh, algorithm, and also because they consider big size TSPTV, so big size problems with uh, 400, 450 nodes, uh, and so on. And the results are compared in terms of average cost, standard deviation, and reliability, and computational time. The proposed algorithms always have performed the comparison one proposed by the Silvian Rutia. And on average, this is the improvement we get. The solution, the proposed solution is also very reliable to our best knowledge because the coefficient of variation is always less than 1%. And in terms of computational time, we are a hundred, a thousand times faster than the Sylvian Rutia. So that's uh, very fast, very good. Um, here you can see the table of results, but of course we, we used uh, 93 problems. So this is just uh, the beginning. Uh, we have here, we have problems of 200 nodes, but we arrived until nodes of 500, 550 nodes. So maybe we have also one or two problems of a thousand nodes, but the proposed algorithm always have performed the comparison one. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, we propose in this paper this algorithm for the big size traveling system problem with time windows. We combined these two techniques, the divide and conquer and the bias randomization, which has never been combined before in literature to our best knowledge. We validated over on 93 very complicated problem uh, from 200 up to 550 nodes. Um, it's a future research perspective. We do, would like to validate the proposed solution in real data, in a real industrial environment. 
uh, we would like also to consider customer dependent delay penalties, not just uh, uh, costing time uh, uh, like uh, we did in this case. And uh, we would like also eventually to integrate it into the Clark Rice Savings algorithm in order, in order to take on not just the traveling salesman problem, but also the vehicle routing problem with them windows. That's it. And thank you very much for the attention. This is my email in case you are interested to contact me. Thank you. Okay, I hope that finally you have also all read and understood the presentation. So, um, Mattia is here. I think yes. he is available for questions. So, if there is a, there are questions from the audience, please ask. Uh, did you spread the computation on different computers in parallel? No, uh, it was not parallelized because uh, I mean it, there was need to do it uh, and uh, on a single problem it is not possible to do it because we, we are splitting the main problem in uh, sub problems but the time window so the time uh, you visit the last node of the first sub problem has an impact on the uh, on the on the objective function you get uh, after the uh, or uh, becoming the second sub problems i don't know if i uh, well explained but uh, on the same problem it's very difficult to parallelize this algorithm maybe you can execute it four times in parallel on the same problem but that's just uh, like increasing the number of iteration we we didn't have such a need thank you thank you any other question from the audience? No, it seems that we have no further questions. So thank you again, Mattia. Next presentation. Well, actually next presentation, uh, I think is mine. <laughs> uh, next paper uh, is uh, optimization, optimizing picking operations in a distribution center of the large scale retail trade. Paper number uh, 119, so let me just search for this paper, 119, that one, okay, and let's see, okay, um, I am, um, sorry, let me just check if I have also Enable the video. Oh, actually, the volume. Okay, now it's fine. Okay, it should work, I hope. Hmm? It seems. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Eleonora Bottani. Uh, I am uh, a professor of industrial logistics at the University of Parma in Italy. This paper is about the uh, optimization of uh, picking operations in a distribution center of the large scale retail trade. We are two authors of this paper, besides me, uh, Mrs. Beatrice Franchi, who is uh, a research fellow at the Department of Engineering and Architecture under my supervision. The objective of this study is to design and evaluate different scenarios intended for the optimization of picking operations in the distribution center of the la a large uh, retail chain business case, operating in the fruit and vegetable sectors. The chosen approach consists in modifying and combining the routing of pickers with four allocation policies. Uh, in terms of routing, three different meta heuristic routing algorithms uh, plus two heuristic routing algorithms are proposed and tested, uh, coupled with four allocation policies with the aim of decreasing the average distance traveled by the operator during the picking tasks. The three different meter heuristic routing algorithms are uh, ant colony optimization, min max ant system, and a backtrack algorithm. 
why the two heuristic routing algorithms are the traditional S-shape policy and um, an advanced S-shape policy called S-shape plus. Uh, for optimizing the picking activity at uh, the chosen company, who is called uh, Company X for confidentiality reasons, um, various uh, scenarios have been reproduced using an original code developed under um, Visual Basic for application in Microsoft Excel. Each scenario consists of a combination uh, of the allocation policies plus the routing algorithm. To determine the best scenario, 500 orders were extracted from the company's database and were taken as a representative example, sample of the company's activity. The length of the picking list extracted ranged from 5 to 50 items with step 5. Um, the layout of the warehouse taken into account is particular. It consists of two contiguous warehouses called S2 and S6. S2 consists of 10 isler for a total of 20 shelves and is crossed transversely by two corridors resulting in a three block warehouse. The second warehouse called S6 has a shorter corridor and contains only 19 rows of shelves. The aisles of both the warehouses are not particularly wide, approximately 2.5 meters, and this uh, allows to assume the um, constraint of narrow aisle, which is typically used in uh, uh, in the picking context, this means that uh, an operator cannot change direction uh, inside an aisle. Um, the item allocation policies, the four item allocation policies uh, taken into account were the random one, that is the policy currently used by the company, two forms of dedicated policy. The first one is a dedicated policy on the basis of the withdrawal frequency of items. This means that the most um, requested item should be located closer to, to the entry point. A dedicated policy based on the product quantity, in this case the policy are not uh, um, all the same in terms of weight, and this is taken into account when ranking them. The last uh, approach is a categorization of products into classes based on demand. In this case, uh, class A uh, covers 80% of sales, class B 15% of sales, and class C 5% of sales approximately. About the routing algorithm, S-shape and S-shape plus are um, quite simple algorithms. S-shape is a simple algorithm in which uh, the picker um, <clears throat> uh, um, cross entirely uh, an aisle, in the case it has to, um, to take uh, an item uh, from that uh, aisle. Therefore, it is first necessary to determine which aisle to, should be uh, crossed, and in, in the case an aisle should not be crossed, of course it is skipped. Um, the key difference between the S shape and the S shape plus is that the symbol plus denotes the fact that uh, in the case the warehouse also has cross aisles, this can be used for um, change um, from one aisle to another. Uh, the backtracking instead is a general algorithm for finding solutions to some computational problems notably constraint satisfaction problems that incrementally base candidates to the solution and abandons the candidate, which means that it takes back as soon as it determines that the candidate cannot possibly be completed to a valid solution. For the purpose of this study, the formulation of the backtrack algorithm has been divided into two functions called recursively. The first one is called the three rec function and the second one, one is the distance rec function. An example of this algorithm is presented with three mandatory points plus the origin in this picture. End colony optimization is an algorithm uh, based on probabilistic techniques uh, used for solving computational problems that can be reduced to finding good path through graphs. 
there are examples in literature of the usage of ant colony optimization in the context of picking. In particular, the authors have developed this uh, study that uh, exactly uh, proposed the application of uh, uh, ant colony optimization for um, pickers, picking optimization in manual warehouses. The algorithm settings uh, are the following, number of ants, five, number of iteration, 1000, um, the uh, evaporation rate, uh, 0.5, the pheromone factor, one, um, the relative importance of uh, um, <clears throat> the, the um, um, the exponent uh, set at three and uh, a Q uh, is one, is an arbitrary uh, value. Um, Mixmax ant system is um, an advancement of the uh, ant colony uh, optimization algorithm. You can refer to this study by Schutzel and Hoss for a detailed description of the mix, uh, ma max mean ant system. Um, the key difference between the classic uh, anti-colony optimization and the min-max ant system lies in the different updating procedure for the delta fermo matrix and also in the case that on each path there could be a maximum and minimum uh, quantity of pheromone. Mm, what we get? Okay, um, the first result is that uh, um, for small, medium-sized order, approximately up to 15 items, the backtrack algorithm is the best choice among all the alg algorithms at equal allocation policy. So regardless of the allocation policy, <clears throat> uh, typically backtrack is better if the size of the orders is uh, limited. The graph below illustrates the average distance traveled by a picker um, using the backtrack loot routing algorithm and uh, the, um, all the possible policies, um, allocation policies. Uh, of course, a higher slope is observed in the first part, especially for order from 15 to 20 items. When working with uh, up to 15 items per order, the optimal path is always found while beyond that order side, it is uh, um, likely that the algorithm is interrupted because of time uh, constraint without reaching the optimal solution and probably not exploring all possible picking tools. The usage in general of an intelligent algorithm such as the backtrack, but also uh, heuristics, meta heuristics algorithm, instead of a, a more simple heuristic criterion can bring greater benefits in the case of few order lines or equal benefits to a change in the goods position in policy. Uh, similarly, the application of an intelligent algorithm is always a good choice regardless of the storage assignment policy. In fact, no matter the size of the order, there is an average saving of 10% in the travel distance with peaks up to 20%. Conclusions uh, about the routing, the best choice would be to use the backtrack algorithm for orders up to one, um, up to 15 lines. Um, min max and system algorithm is to be preferred with larger orders. Although the optimal path is no longer guaranteed, uh, the algorithm always returns a, re a solution quality on average similar to the recursive algorithm, but with a very short resolution time. About the item allocation, moving from the current random policy to a dedicated policy uh, improves the results by 20%, between 20% and 40% in terms of reduction of the path. If switching to the class-based policy, the positive difference can be between 13% and 20%. As possible future uh, improvements, um, we use the um, Visual Basic for application for developing the code for this study, but uh, probably um, other programming languages like C++ or Python could be more appropriate for uh, this uh, um, kind of application. Mm, uh, we are not information engineers, so we are not able to, to evaluate uh, how the performance can change, but what is sure is that uh, uh, probably dedicated programming language could be more effective in terms of computational time. 
A further possible development in the field of allocation policy is the creation of a calculation system that is cyclically cyclically analyzes the orders processed and autonomously proposes new subdivision of products into classes. In fact, one of the main problems with pro product allocation by classes is that the scenario is typically dynamic, meaning that the uh, products belonging to the various classes should be periodically revised. This could be a problem because uh, uh, there is a need, for example, to update the uh, evaluation of classes every, for example, six months uh, if, uh, <clears throat> if they should be um, in line with the products handled by the White House. This is particularly relevant in the case of the food and beverage sector because the seasonality and um, products that are sold uh, typically in uh, anniversaries could lead to a very strong variation in both the volume of orders and the type of products handled. These are um, some of the references of this study and mm, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, here I am for questions. <laughs> It seems that we have no questions now, so I will, uh, of course, uh, remain here because uh, I will share the session. And um, uh, in this case, I will move to the next presentation, which is uh, um, paper number uh, 120, a flexible and generic simulation model for inbound transportation system. I can see uh, Zrahidin uh, uh, connected. Good morning. And um, if you hello, agree, Roger. hello, uh, if you agree, I can uh, share your um, uh, video. Um, yes, please. Yes, please. So 120. Okay. This should be your video. Hello everyone and welcome to my presentation. I'm here today to present a flexible and generic simulation model for inbound transport systems. Inbound transport systems are an integral part of logistics networks and they often represent a condition to the economic success of companies. Sorry, um, I think that I have, <laughs> I have uh, uh, touched some uh, windows uh, and uh, uh, let me share again the screen. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, is the uh, presentation running? Oh, let me just uh, uh, connect again. Okay, um, let me start from some uh, seconds. Okay. System interactions and the stochastic nature of its processes Analytical designing methods are either inaccurate or demand a great computing effort. Simulation methods, on the other hand, allow the consideration of a large range of factors, such as order assignment and analytic strategies, vehicle interactions, stochastic fluctuations of the processes, and so on. In doing so, they enable an accurate analysis of the system performance and provide a decision-making basis for optimization measures in practice. 
Simulation methods are, however, associated with the high cost of the development, application, and evaluation of the models. The aim of this research is, therefore, to develop a generic simulation model that allows for an accurate evaluation of the throughput of inbound cost processes. The simulation model should enable the consideration of a large number of UIC factors in order to accurately reproduce the system behavior. Depending on the available input data collection, the simulation model should also enable a varying level of detail so that it can be used not only to design new systems, but also to identify optimization opportunities in existing structures. In this work, we focus on systems that use a combination of fog lists, target trains, and automated guide papers, as you can see here in the figure. The considered transport system can be viewed as a multi-commodity flow network. It consists of a set of commodities that need to be transported with some vehicles through a network. The layout of the plant is modeled as a directed graph. The nodes have specific positions and represent sources, sinks, or intersections. The edges or arcs represent the directed path between a pair of nodes and have some properties such as width, maximum allowed height, etc. The material flow of the system can be thought of as a queuing network as shown here in the figure. A commodity is a set of transport orders that is associated with a load unit with specified properties, a source and a sink node. At the source and sink nodes, we specify stochastic distributions representing the arrival and the service process, respectively. Additionally, we define a buffer with limited capacity at the service station in order to accurately model some adjacent processes below the system boundaries, such as production units or warehouses. Transport vehicles have a great number of parameters that can affect the overall system performance. Aside from usual parameters, such as type, dimensions, and kinematic values, we define two stochastic distributions to describe the behavior of the load pickup and load drop-off process. To model possible interruptions, we introduce two additional distributions for the mean time between failures and the mean time to repair. An interruption can represent a vehicle failure, a charging operation, or simply a pause of the dial. We also associate every interruption to a node that needs to be visited whenever an interruption occurs. In the case of a vehicle failure, the variable is set to null. Finally, we specify a position where the vehicle can park until the next order assignment. In order to have an accurate representation of the transport systems, there exist some restrictions that have to be considered. The first category deals with the restrictions of layout and more precisely edges on vehicles. If, for example, the height of the vehicle exceeds the maximum allowed height of an edge, then the vehicle cannot drive through that edge. This is particularly the case when an edge crosses a gate that separates two areas of a plant. The speed limit can also be set on edges to model paths with human proximity, where vehicles have to drive with a lower speed. The second category handles the restrictions of commodities on vehicles. These restrictions are explicitly imposed with Boolean variables and represent eventual incompatibilities between the vehicle and the transported load unit associated with a certain commodity. Finally, to facilitate the data input procedure, we apply the developer structure to implement a user-friendly interface. This interface uses an XML schema to store the information and easily communicate with the simulation model framework. The simulation model is implemented in the discrete event simulation software Technomatic Plan Simulation. After setting the input file path and clicking on the appropriate button, the simulation model is automatically generated. As you can see, it consists of a set of tracks linked to the sources to the sinks. At every source and sink, we create a sensor that detects the presence of the vehicles and initiates, when applicable, the load handling process.
For other assignments, we implement a vehicle initiated strategy. In other words, every time a vehicle delivers a load unit at the sink, an event triggers the other assignment method. In the presence of orders that can be executed by the vehicle at that time, a route will be calculated and assigned to the vehicle. Otherwise, the vehicle drives to its waiting position, if defined, or wait at the last visited sink for the next order. The routing procedure uses vehicle-specific static routes. The routes are calculated with a modified version of the Floyd Marshall algorithm that considers the different intersections between vehicle and edges. The initial route consists of a first-come, first-served ordered set of transport orders with a size less or equal to the vehicle capacity. Using a two-opt algorithm, the solution is then optimized. In order to identify bottleneck situations and consequently derive some appropriate optimization measures, various key performance indicators can be monitored during the simulation. For each commodity, we calculate and update throughput, cycle time, and buffer utilization values. Furthermore, we determine utilization rates of vehicles, which we additionally subdivide with respect to their possible states, namely driving, load handling, logged, waiting, and fit. Last but not least, we create a heat map that illustrates the congestion within the network. To summarize, the developed modeling approach tackles the challenge of complexity by allowing the consideration of a great number of influence factors. The generic structure enables also a very simple extension to new parameters. Besides, using mathematical distributions instead of constant variables ensures flexibility with regard to the level of details of the simulation model which can be used not only to design new systems, but also to identify optimization opportunities in existing structures. Through the user-friendly interface and the automatic generation of the model, costs associated with simulation can be considerably reduced. In future work, new transport order initiated assignment strategies will be implemented which enabled a more efficient optimization of material flow. Furthermore, a dynamic routing will be applied in order to balance congestion through the network. Finally, the simulation model will be extended to include bidirectional tracks. To tackle the problematic of deadlocks that may arise, prevention and handling strategies will be developed. Thank you very much for your attention. And thank you. Thank Sorry you very much. Sorry for those more technical problems. No problem. Uh, um, do you have any questions? Let's see. Uh, oh, maybe Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. Please. You talked about the mathematic distribution. And uh, 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 can you show again the the uh, the trans the transparent the slide about it is it, is um, it? which slide approximately um, let me see maybe I can oh. find that maybe you can share it yourself maybe yep. it's better yeah do that Take some time. No. So. Okay. 
So, can you see my, my screen? Yeah. Yeah, we, we yes. Okay, so let's go back to the this one. You mean uh, not this one? You mean this one? Or which uh, uh, which, uh, which slide do you mean? About using discrete event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, the technomatic plan simulation uh, framework is a discrete event simulation framework. So it works. Uh, the, the distributions are for the distribution for the for the pickup uh, pickup and the drop of time of vehicles, for example. So we can have uh, like a constant distribution for 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 this time or for the for the arrival rates or arrival um, uh, arrival rates and service rates. So we can have uh, uh, constant distributions, and we can have uh, I use the defined the, the distribution exp uh, exponential distribution. They can be the distribution are uh, uh, discrete discrete distributions. Uh, so you use Dirac distributions here. Sorry. I, I write it Dirac distribution. Uh, yeah, not only Dirac, so uh, we have uh, the Dirac distribution, we have exponential distribution, we can have also user user defined distribution like for for uh, a warehouse, uh, an automatic warehouse. So an a a SRS, we can define a distribution with a, with a text file, so with probabilities, and then with drag and drop we can uh, Add the, this distribution to to the user interface, and it will be automatically updated in the simulation model. So that's how to, how to work. Okay, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, any other question from the audience? No. So thank you again for your uh, presentation and. Um, uh, I have uh, prepared the, the video of the last presentation. Um, let me just show the screen. The last presentation is um, uh, paper number 127, a multi-criteria cost-benefit analysis to optimize the oil supply network. Um, let me see if I can identify the presenter of this paper. Maybe yes. Uh, oh, Professor Eleonora. <laughs> yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um. Uh. Well, this should be your presentation. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. I can start. Good morning, everyone. I'm Yusuf Ali with co-authors Muhammad Bilal, Muhammad Sadir, and Tamila Petrello and Fabio Di Felici. The title of the paper is a multi criteria cost benefit analysis to optimize the oil supply network where uh, we are going to present different uh, mode of transportation for uh, oil uh, industry. The fossil fuel is one of the most important source of energy and everyone use fossil fuels for different purposes. However, different mode of transportation are used to transport oil from its extraction to the consumption location. Oil consignment here accounted for around 30% of the worldwide. Crude oil mostly conveyed by ship among extraction sites, refinery, and point of consumption points. Normally, in some developed countries, they also use pipeline. But basically, this paper is strongly related to the developing countries. And in this paper, we are going to present different mode of transportation and then to find out which way of transportation will be the most feasible. If I am if I just talk about the the transportation uh, of oil in the developed countries, so pipeline transportation is one of the main uh, feasible one. But in the developing countries, due to the terrorism, due to some mean unprecedented situation, uh, this way of transportation have some uh, serious concerns. So basically, we already uh, conduct different mean cost benefit analysis to find out that which way of transportation is the best one: the rail transportation, the oil tanker transportation, road transportation, pipeline transportation, and ship transportation. We, <clears throat> in the introduction section, we already discussed different pros and cons of these way mode of transportation. For example, the Exxon Valdez spell in the Alaska. 
uh, the oil tanker load accident, which has recently occurred uh, in, in Pakistan. Uh, we are in an oil tanker due to the accident. The whole uh, oil from the tanker spill out and the, uh, the, the, the population near that uh, specific accident start uh, collecting the oil uh, while using utensil and different things. And at that time, somebody mean someone uh, starts smoking cigarette and due to that, uh, mean a, a, a fire erupted and it took the, li the lives of more than 200 people. Similarly, in the cubic oil train, uh, the Keystone pipeline oil spill. So basically, the main objective of this paper to present that which way of transportation will be the most feasible one. So basically, uh, we are using some optimization tools of uh, the fuzzy analytical hierarchy process, uh, process Prometi, uh, where are some, there are some main different criteria, which are cost related criteria, some are benefit related criteria, and we want to consider cost, we want to consider the environmental impact, and we also want to consider the risk related to these uh, different way of transportation. And we already conducted cost benefit analysis and we already proposed a pipeline project for the uh, Pakistan oil and gas industry that if they construct a pipeline from uh, Shekhapura to Peshawar, Peshawar which is mean uh, in the northwest province of Pakistan uh, closely related to the border of Afghanistan. So this will be the most feasible one. So we have already conducted a feasibility analysis and we already formulate a policy for uh, the government official. So this is the literature review. I don't want to go into the great detail because we have already filled the gap in the literature review that in the developing countries, no such like uh, study has been taken place. So I mean this, the, the novelty of this study that we are going to present uh, a feasible model uh, to the government official that if they construct a pipeline, between these two destinations, then it will uh, really improve uh, the, the transportation and it will reduce the cost of the transportation and definitely it will uh, not mean impact too much on the environment. So the, the in the methodology, we basically use the fuzzy, uh, fuzzy analytical hierarchy process. As you people know, that fuzzy uh, set theory was first time developed by the Asghar Zadeh. Uh, so I mean, when we have different options, when we have different criteria, the, the option is not a binary yes or no or one or zero, but when we have uh, mean, let's suppose um, three or four different uh, alternative and then we want to decide which one will be the best one. So we use fuzzy energy hierarchy process. So from the figure, you can see that the goal is ranking our transportation mode for oil supply, specifically in the Pakistani perspective, in the developing country perspective. Then we have different criteria. One is the cost, definitely for our developing countries, they want to reduce this cost. Environmental is very, very important. We want that mean uh, while uh, transporting the fossil fuel, the mean the the the, the vehicle or mean the, the if you if you using the ship, so I mean they emit too much CO2 emission in the air, the greenhouse gases, number of accidents, just like I already mentioned that in Pakistan recently some different accidents occurred, some mean uh, terrorist acts already uh, happened. So how to reduce that risk of terrorist attack, duration, uh, normally the pipeline transportation not take too much time while mean transporting from one location to another take too much time. And these are the sub criteria, cost of transport, cost of fuel, cost of energy, oil spill, greenhouse gases, number of fatal accidents, number of fatalities, terrorist attack, time impact, advance impact of protest flexibility. So from this purpose, we want to find out the best way of transportation. So we use fuzzy analytical hierarchy process and then uh, in order to further rank those different options, we use Prometi, which is also an operation technique and we also construct a visual, uh, we already con uh, construct a visual Gaia plan in order to visually represent the, 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 the results and we already conduct the cost benefit analysis. So this figure showing the Prometi technique results. Basically, we uh, when the, the, the weights which we have calculated while using the fuzzy and hierarchy process, these weights are used in Prometi to rank the three alternatives, okay, mode of oil transportation in Pakistan. So Prometi ranking compares the alternative corresponding to the two preference flows. It means that action are also compared for complex criteria that are highly conflicting one. So you can see the, the preference flows are obtained by pairwise comparison for all alternatives. 
minus 1 and the plus 1. So minus 1 value represent the worst probable value and the plus 1 value uh, basically represent very uh, value signify the best probable value. So all action values lies between these two values results show that the pipeline mode you can see the, the pipeline mode of pipe transportation has the highest positive flow. So basically this Prometheus show that the, the pipeline which is an alternative which basically showing the positive flow followed by the railway. You can see this is the railway car and the road transportation is the least uh, the least transportation mode. So these corresponding values you can see 0 0.455, 0 0.133, okay, 0 0.177 and 0.5 uh, minus 0.58 respectively. This implies that pipeline are the best and really are the medium mode of transportation for oil supply in Pakistan. Whereas road transportation uh, based on the tanker and lorries is found to be the worst mode of transportation for oil supply in Pakistan. This, this uh, figure showing the Gaia plane. So basically this is our second analysis. The second analysis is based on visual Gaia 3D plane. Uh, basically it is used to present the problem and associated result in graphical form. It is also compared to different criteria and alternatives. So you can see different alternative and different criteria. So in this graph, action are signified by the point where is criteria on axis with a green node. So you can see the criteria on the green node is and weighed by decision axis. It is clear from this figure that the most important criteria, the cost and environmental impact had long axis. So you can see the criteria of the cost and uh, the environmental impact had long axis compared to other criteria. In addition, this figure also shows that criteria which have weights such as cost and environmental impact have long axis as compared to other criteria. This figure shows that the pipeline mode of transportation, the blue box, you can see this pipeline, the blue box and this rail car is very close to the ideal solution. So basically these are very close to the ideal solution shown in the red color. So basically this is my uh, ideal solution and these boxes are very close to the ideal solution. The railway are also relatively close to the ideal solution compared to the road transportation arm uh, that has been uh, further the most. So basically we already conducted this and we already proposed these uh, results to the uh, government official and uh, these are the most mean optimal solution. The pipeline uh, cost benefit analysis is we already conduct this cost benefit analysis and pipeline transport need much higher initial investment uh, because other way of transportation not required too much highly uh, initial investment while the pipeline need much higher initial investment as compared to the other. However, it is considered as the cheapest source of transportation due to very low operating cost. And it's also mean not impacting the environment too much. So the government has expedited a couple of iron infrastructure projects. Among them is 475 kilometer pipeline project uh, from Lahore to Tarujaba, which is located in Peshawar. Estimating cost of the project is 56 billion. The government decides to outsource project under the open uh, competitive bidding process. So it will be soon taking place. And it's also they also mean relating it to China-Pakistan economic corridor. Once completion of 15 years of the, uh, so we already conduct a sensitivity analysis that year. So basically these are the very, very important results. The, we will achieve the break even point after the 15 years. Okay. So the, the, the results are very interesting and uh, we have already formulated a policy for this. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. If you have any question, you can ask. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> for your virtual presentation. Thank um, you, Professor. Let's see if we have questions from the audience. Can you uh, show the previous slide? If we just scroll. Um, I can go back, uh, slightly back in the presentation. Right, oh. yeah. Is it possible? Um, because it was very fast. These are the very, very important results. Uh, which one? Uh, which slide exactly, Daniel? Uh, I'm not sure this or the, the next one. I Yeah, maybe. Sure. Should I share my screen? Point no, no, because it was years. a mess. Okay. A mess. Next one. Okay. No. Okay. This one. Okay. Please. Uh,
Uh, okay, thank you. I didn't have the time to read it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, if uh, we don't have a uh, question, I think that um, we came to the conclusion of this session. So I have to thank you all for uh, your presence. And uh, I hope that you will enjoy the rest of the conference, although in a virtual mode. Thank you again. Bye. Thank, thank you so thank much, you. Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.